All right, everyone, welcome in to Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, and our third edition of Florida State Seminoles Live. We are so excited to uh, to, to have launched this a couple of weeks ago. I had a great discussion a couple of weeks ago with uh, Logan Robinson. You can see him right there in the middle screen from uh, Noel Game Day. We got Jason uh, Parker on the line as well from uh, Chop Chat. Gentlemen, how you doing tonight? Doing good. How you doing? Doing great. Doing wonderful. Excited to be on. So we've cleared up some technical issues because I know as soon as I jump on the live chat, there are going to be at least 10 people who are wondering why we're late. Technical issues cleared up. We're talking Florida State football and maybe a little bit of baseball as well because, hey, a trip to Omaha is always special. I want to remind everyone out there that the Super Chat is on. So contribute to the channel uh, by joining in the Super Chat. And... Uh, find the value here. If you do, then contribute on the super chat. You can also contribute by doing your Amazon shopping by grabbing the link in the description section that you find below. Grab the Amazon link, do your regular shopping right there. Doesn't cost you an extra penny. Don't have to buy the product. Just do your regular shopping at Amazon. And our voice of college football community is over on Patreon. So grab the link down below as well. And uh, you can join me for two exclusive live streams each and every week, one in which I respond to your viewer comments. So come prepared. And then also where I bring you, the viewers, the, the community on to talk college football with me. All right, gentlemen, how does this baseball success compare to football success, which is more important? How do, how do you compare and contrast in any way, Jason? Obviously, football is is definitely more important, and and I think n there are not many people who are holding out a lot of hope of a national title, judging from years past. But you know what? It's Mike Martin's final season. It's year forty. Who knows? They're not even they're not even supposed to be there right now. So you know what? Take the trip to Omaha. You're one of the last eight left, and let's see what happens. Roll the dice a little bit. I think I think it's nice because also you get a little bit more before you start the dry run of the off season for football, so you get yeah. a little bit more entertainment, a little bit more there. Uh, Florida State's what on a six game winning streak, if you're including the the ACC tournament, but the performance by them has been special, and it's just even more movie like to see Mike Martin go through this and uh, just see the players uh, really really playing hard for him, and it's they're. They're hot right now at the perfect time. So I'm excited to see them play on Saturday against Arkansas, which should be a really good matchup. So we already have some comments in the live chat and a couple pertain to football. And one's going to hit you guys a bit hard as uh, football guys defending this program, but we'll get right to it. Anthony, good to see you. Thanks for the hi and hello. You as well, William. Eli Arbeza calling FSU a basketball and a baseball school football washed up. That's his comment. Mm. Go ahead, Jason. I mean, after last season, if, if you go by just last season, sure, I'll, I'll give you that one. Washed up's a little hard, but, uh, but yeah, after last season, I can understand why people taking a little bit of a step back, but you know what? 2019 let's put 2018 in the past 2018 did not happen mm -hmm. when i read a comment like that i try to determine okay is this person being serious or are they just kind of poking the bear having a little fun a little trash talking which is all allowed good fun hey that's why we're here to uh to uh, uh kind of have some fun with everybody's team mm -hmm. but if they're if they're being reasonable here okay it's been all of two football seasons since florida state was a top 10 team. I need to see like a lull of five, six, seven years, like what we saw with Texas at a particular time, just over the last several years. And then back in the nineties, Oklahoma in the nineties, some stretches of, you know, significant, maybe a full roster cycle, a full coaching tenure that went bad Two football seasons. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to announce the, the death of Florida state football quite yet. I, I, I don't think anyone's announcing the death of it. I think it looks like this person is. Well, that's one. Per that's one online person. I'm sure Logan's read plenty on on. I think mean, <laughs> we've had it on our website. I think it's more of a owning it. I think it's. I think one of the things to move forward is owning this. Last year, last year was its issues, and, and we've talked about it before. It wasn't all 
It wasn't all Willie. Um, it wasn't all the, the injuries and whatnot that happened last year. It was a, it was a series. It was a cycle downhill for a few seasons. Um, but I think it's just owning it, owning what took place last year and just saying, okay, last year was it. It is what it is. We're not going to be like some schools that continue to, you know, live in the past. From this point, it's 2019 on. And what is 2019 going to do for us? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tallahassee isn't used to football being this way, and Florida State wasn't started is not supposed to be like this, and it'll be changed quick, or people will be gone. Yes, uh, it's not bad seeing basketball have a good season. Of course, baseball having a crazy run right now, but we we talked to Terrence Mann, basketball player, and we talked. You know, he was like, "We heard it's basketball school now and everything," but he he mentioned, you know, this this school is surrounded by tons and tons of good teams all around. Women's sports are incredible in Tallahassee. Um, so, but yeah, he did still mention Florida State is focused on football more than anything, and that's how it will always be. Um, and now the, now the focus, and, you know, we'll get our opinions once September rolls around, but seeing how Taggart's hires did in order to keep this team uh, and fans – uh, on board with giving support because there, there's been some positivity the last uh, month or so looking forward to football season. We didn't have that for a while last season. Most fans wanted it to end after the second month then, but there's a lot of positivity kind of heading towards that way. And I think fans like the hires. I like the hires that Taggart made um, with Clements as probably one of my favorites. And of course, Bryles and Dugans, because there's a lot of talent for the wide receivers there for Dugans. So I, I think, most of these fans in the comments are coming from uh, Miami or Gainesville. So we'll just laugh at it. We, we had a good time with them whenever we called them the foreign eighters. Um, and I still do that to all my Gator friends. So it's real nice. I don't yeah. try, People in South Florida have been so friendly to me since last season. I don't know what you're talking about. Logan. <laughs> a phenomenal time down here in South Florida. Oh, I bet you have. I bet you have. Yeah. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, bringing you Florida State Seminoles talk each and every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And if we want to make a competition out of this, we've had as many as 350 on the line at one time watching Miami uh, live talk. We, we're just starting with Florida State, so we got 24 on the line right now. I'm guessing we topped out around 90 last week, something in that range. Uh, we had a couple thousand watch the the final version once it was all said and done. So we'll, we'll help us get there uh, once them, we get toward football none season. Them, and none of them went to UM, so that's all that matters. <laughs> we actually went to FSU. That's all I'm saying. Just throw that out there. Shot fired. Man, Shot. the chat's really going to love it tonight. <laughs> I'm staying out of the way of those comments. Uh, when you guys get to certain territory there, of course, I'm Mr. Neutral college football guy. So, so I'll let you guys shoot the, shoot the darts and, the, and fire the guns and I'll stay out of the way. Michael hires asking, and I don't know if this statistic is accurate, but it wouldn't surprise me considering Willie Taggart is obviously coached two group of five schools before the one season at Oregon and the awful season at Florida State. So being a group of five coach, if you're facing top 25 teams, then they're typically from the power five and you're a big underdog. So Michael Hires wants us to talk about, and I would have to verify this, maybe I'll give it a quick look as you guys address this, Willie Taggart's resume against top 25 teams, which is, according to Michael, 0-20. Hmm. I want to make sure I have to I do dive double into research that. on that. I would like to do double research. I mean, during the season, during the season last year, I heard a lot about. Um, I'm not even going to comment on it unless we get factual. Mm -hmm. Thing. Tell them to throw a link in the chat. <laughs> yeah, that I, seems a bit severe, doesn't it? I, I, I mean, I would not be totally surprised at it because of the fact, like you said, because of him coaching at Western Kentucky, coaching at USF and whatnot. But you know what? Oh, against top 20 programs, like I'm okay. looking, you know, obviously right now and so far, yes, I'm seeing everything I'm seeing so far as a loss. But to me, a, a fact like that really doesn't mean anything at this moment. At this moment right now, he is the coach of the 2019 Florida State Seminoles. And that's, that's going to be the goal. He's probably going to play a top 20 team against Boise State, and if you win that game, then that fact doesn't mean anything anymore. So I get where it's coming from. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I'm looking right now, and so far everything's coming up that that fact is true. But 
if it is true, I, you know, with all due respect, so what at this point? <laughs> so last year they lost to, and uh, you have to consider there's two different ways you can count to those games. You can either right. go the ranking at the time of the kickoff or the final ranking at the end of the regular season. For example, they lost to number 20 Virginia Tech opening game last year season and obviously Virginia Tech did nothing to earn a ranking at the end of the year going six and seven. So that was a loss against the top 25 team, had a loss against number 17 Miami, had a loss against number two Clemson, a loss against number three Notre Dame, number 22 Boston College. Well, that was a win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to mention the Boston Michael. College game. Okay. Are we going at kickoff? Boston College didn't finish ranked. They were seven and five. <laughs> So again, depends I mean, how we count them. I mean, but, uh, yeah, they would have been zero and uh, six last year against ranked teams at the time of the kickoff. Mm -hmm. So if they I, beat, so if they beat Boise State in the first game, and let's say Boise State is ranked as a top twenty team, or even ranked in the top twenty five, then then I guess that stat doesn't matter anymore. Depending uh, on how this is uh, calculated, yes. What was ranked? I know Boston College was ranked in the twenties. What were they against Florida State? Were they? Were uh, they? They were number twenty-two at the time of the game, okay. but they finished seven and five. They weren't ranked uh, at the end yeah. of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at this. They're bringing up the we got bringing up the past and everything. You know, talking about positivity. Twenty twenty. Jason was just talking about how positive it's looking. You know, we don't think about the past, but the chat's just bringing it up. Miami fans, you got a lot of Miami fans in here. They don't have much else to do. We, we do have Miami fans here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. So you guys are going to help us balance the scales is what oh. you're going to do. You're going to bring the Florida State droves in. That is true. Jason, I, I have a question for you. Go for it. Who's going to be the most influential player for Florida State on, on either offense or defense, but as a whole, influential-wise? I mean, of course, there's Blackman, but just – who do you think on the top of your head? Because I've been asking all my friends this and also people on our team at Noel Game Day, and it's kind of a, a variety, mm -hmm. but I'd like to get your thoughts. We've talked about it before on here, and to me, just from watching him in the spring, would be your team death. The defense back from, from Palm Beach, from down here in South Florida. To me, if he can come out, and, and you saw during the spring game, just him playing like a stud from kickoff from the jump. So to me, if he can come out and be have a solid freshman year like some of the other guys, I think that that could be the key to to turning things around. I think to me, he's the one that I want to see early. I want to see if he starts against Boise State. I think there's a chance he does. If he does, I I, I see big things coming from him this year. That would be my guy. What about you? Uh, I would probably, I mean, it's always, always pick the quarterback mostly, I, but uh, top out. I, I know, I know. It, it would probably. I would go. I, I know what Blackman's going to give, so I'm not too worried on that part for Florida State and their success on that front, leadership wise and whatnot. But uh, offensive line wise, you could strap all those names there. I'm actually. I'll go with a bold pick here. I'd like to see. Dante freshman offensive lineman Dante Lucas have an early impact at FSU. I think bringing in a young guy like that and what I've heard on, in the locker room and what he's been saying during the spring practices and him calling out veterans, mm -hmm. uh, calling out people that are transferring, telling them to get out if you're not going to be here. Um, if he if he starts playing pretty early on, I think you'll see a team definitely in this class uh, like Jaleel McRae, who's been very public saying this is a different class. We saw what happened last year. We got to change it. I think if you see a guy like Dante Lucas, who's a vocal guy, um, obviously is going to compete very hard to get a starting job. Um, that having that kind of impact as a young person can change how these veterans will play. Um, and definitely, you know, if Dante Lucas can start that kind of trend with Blackman wanting to protect him, uh, I think you see a really, really close knit team. But I think it starts offensive line wise with. Lucas, and that's a bold, that's a bold pick. 
A number of people after we talked about Willie Taggart in that uh, dismal record against top 25 foes had requested an ACC coaches ranking. So why don't we put that on the agenda for next week? And uh, we'll all rank our ACC coaches, 1 through 14. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds good to me. I didn't know there was going to be homework here. All right. Uh, yeah, I know. I got another class. What, what do you want? Deadline push? Do you want two weeks to prepare? No, no. Next week's perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes, there's homework. And this coming from a guy that, Jason, of course, uh, this week, you you made the Cal Ripken statement before the streak even started that you're going to be here every time, every time, every time. I have a job to do, and my job is to be here. So, <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Is that shade being thrown at me for last week? Because I know I had let, let Jason down quite a I, bit. We, we called Adam Silver and asked him to make sure that there was no NBA game tonight. Okay. Full, full disclosure, Logan, who are you rooting for in the NBA Finals? We're rooting for the Warriors, but I do, on the back of this laptop, I do have a San Francisco little sticker on there. So I am a true fan. I'm a Giants fan, too, San Francisco Giants. So before I get ripped apart, by y'all and this chat. Um, we didn't say anything. <laughs> fans. Exactly. So our guy, Anthony Manzano on the live chat is asking that I, that I read his previous comment, but I'm not making any type of sense out of his last comment. He says he's a Keynes fan, but my realistic win projections for this season for Florida state is, Seven and nine, nine and six. I don't know what that means. Seven dash nine. I guess that's between seven and nine wins. Nine dash six. That's some kind of coding. I don't know what that is, but in general, I respect Florida State. So the one thing that uh, you maybe you guys can explain this to me that um, that that I've gathered in talking to Florida State contributors, Miami contributors, Florida contributors is that they're. There is a healthy, when I say healthy, we'll put it in a football context, hatred between Florida State and Miami that, that um, comprises respect as well, but not so much toward that other school in Florida, the University of. Right. And, we, and we talked about this a little bit last week. When Miami plays Florida to open the season, I mean, I don't know how you're going to go, Logan. I will be rooting for Miami to beat Florida. I think there is a dislike for Miami there is an outright hatred for Florida. Mm -hmm. I can I can agree on that front. It's hard to – I'll just be kind of watching and just have it on in the corner just and watching them hurt each other. But not in a bad way, but just watching them hit each other. Um, I've – since growing up, I've – and with my dad and all that, he was in the Marching Chiefs, so he was – he's been around, you know, football quite a bit, and he's told me stories and all that kind of stuff, so – I, I can't stand Miami fans, and I'm trying to be as neutral as I'll get out here, but I can't stand them no matter what. And that was the hardest thing to deal with um, whenever they came to Tallahassee two years ago. Uh, they came in uh, cocky as I'll get out, uh, cussing at fans, kids, whoever. So there, I think the fan base there is hard to like whatsoever. Um, but, yeah, the, the – Rivalry, the main rivalry is always going to be FSU versus UF, but that Miami rivalry is, I think, just nasty, dirty. I, I think on the other side of that, I'll play the devil's argument side of it being from South Florida, being from down here. To me, the dislike and the hatred is more for the Gators because a a large segment of our population of our enrollment is from Dade County, Miami Dade County, Broward County, Palm Beach County. So there is a lot of that South Florida influence that has gone up there. You know, during the dynasty era, era we were we were cocky as all hell too. So I mean, that's just mm -hmm. that's one of the things about about FSU football. And one of the things, you know, if you look at the documentary, the U documentary, that's one of the things where they talk about how there was never, there's never been a fight, there's never been, you know, all out bloodshed during the games it's 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 cocky it's a lot of smack talking but for the most part there is that level of of respect there's at least a little bit of a level of respect there and it's because we've won you know we we had the dynasty era they won the national titles and florida meanwhile sat in the background until you know until both of us kind of took a step back in the 2000s yeah until tebow christ came from down above right <laughs> 
you, you remember do you remember jason and sorry i know we got to move on but do you remember when tebow came i don't know what year 2008 maybe he came to tallahassee and doke and it was raining and all that and he had all that crap on him from the pain on the ground, but he was running up and side down the side of the sidelines, even further off from the Florida sideline. And he was amping up the crowd and doing all that crap. It, Anytime FSU loses, I take it out of my mind, which is why I act like 2018 didn't happen. So any loss, especially to that man, did not happen. You didn't see it. No, no, I may have been on the field there crying, going, what the heck is going on here? But nope, didn't happen. Yeah, I just disappears out of your head. Nope, no, no losses ever. Undefeated. <laughs> that means we've got a topic that you can uh, go take a bathroom break. You can go to the kitchen. You can do a number of things, Jason, because we're we're going to have to check you out for that one because <laughs> your memory's been erased magically. <laughs> Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. We deliver Florida State football talk every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. So I trust that most of you on the live chat and 44 watching live right now mostly are Florida State fans. So if you love what we do right here and want to support what we do, you can do that a number of ways. Like the video. You go to uh, Noel Game Day. You check out to, uh, Logan's work right there. You go to Chop Chat and uh, you lock in on what uh, Jason's doing over there. And of course, again, you like, you comment, you share, you get on social media, you let people know that we're here every Wednesday night at seven o'clock Eastern time, because we're going to make this uh, something special by the time we kick off against uh, Boise State. Eli Arbeza has got a question here. Hopefully I didn't lose track of it. Okay. Jimbo Fisher, is he on the radar anymore? Do you care what he does at Texas A&M? Do you think he'll be successful? This is just testing. This is what a fun Wednesday night. Thanks, Mark. Man, this has been a great night. So far. Uh, yeah, this is. That's been, why I'm here. Mark? James. Up. James really is missing out on a lot. Um. Well, I'll say. I think fans really don't really don't give a a crap. Honestly, at least FSU fans. Um. It's. I don't know. It, it's a it's a sticky situation what how it went down and everything and see Jimbo Fisher I, I've had time with him um, when I was younger and stuff like that and like he, he is a good he's a good man but the things that were going on inside the university and his relationships in there were god awful and he and he's a he's a stubborn guy really really hard headed and we kind of got Hints at that while Bobby Bowden was still there, he was really inching at wanting the coach very soon, which ended up happening. Um, but for fans, you know, if they care about what he does at Texas A&M and whatever, they will care. You know, some of them, even my dad will text me and say, oh, Texas A&M is down two touchdown, whatever. So they're still keeping their eye on stuff just because it was a really nasty breakup here. And he, he did win a national championship here and had one of the best college football teams Um one of the best college football teams ever, in my opinion, uh, in 2013 uh, and did a good job with them. And he also had a magical quarterback with Jameis Winston, who probably could have helped win them a national championship in 2012. But that can be another topic we can talk about. I'm going to touch on the just from the football side, obviously. There is always going to be a a – segment of the population, a segment of the fan base that is going to root hard against Texas A&M. And, and in full disclosure, I'm one of them. I want Texas A&M to have losing seasons. I want them to, to, to suffer because yeah, I'm still a little bit bitter. It's, it's like any breakup, like any relationship breakup, it's going to be bitter for a while. Is it going to stay that way forever? No. Will you know, when there's the 10th anniversary, 20th anniversary of the, the 2013 title team, will he be back in Tallahassee? Sure. But for right now, it's it's always going to be that bitterness. And as more things come out, and then the, his comments about, oh, well, I, you know, I left FSU in great shape. What, what great shape did you leave FSU in? You know, it, there's part of it that just makes you think that he just doesn't get it, that he still just doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. I think he thinks it's funny almost. At least that comment he made about it being in great shape. He was being very, very funny with that one. 
Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down Florida State uh, football each and every week, four time Wednesday. Uh, we're here for about an hour, and we want you to join in. We got uh, 52 on the line watching right now. Leave your comments, your questions for Jason and for Logan. And I will jump in with my question, which is going to be depending on your frame of reference. So you can go all time. You can go back to 1918 if you want to pull out that uh, three to two loss to um, Colgate, or you can go whatever your frame of reference is when it comes to Florida State football. Colgate. Logan, what are the worst, most excruciating, most crushing, devastating losses that you have suffered as a Florida State fan slash um, media analyst of the team uh, since you've been watching? Or beyond that, if you mm -hmm, so choose. Yeah. I, I am younger. I'm a college kid, so I'm still – I don't have a large frame of history. I'm still learning. I got to learn. Um, you know but, who Fred Bolitnikoff is? Yes. All right. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. thought I'd throw that one out there. <laughs> don't, don't start for Logan. There we go. Yes, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, so I'd probably go with uh, – Oh, I mean, the first thing I think that comes to FSU fans is against NC State at NC State uh, with EJ Manuel um, and uh, 2012, if I'm correct, um, at the four yard line. I don't know, it was somewhere there. Um, I remember went watching when I was little, but uh, we or Florida State fumbled the ball. I'm not sure if EJ Manuel did or our, our Florida State's running back did. Um, but that was pretty excruciating. I believe Florida State was ranked number two in the country, if I'm correct. Um, and that was probably one of the worst. And that kind of, I don't know, it's always that kind of started the stickiness of playing at NC State from there on. Uh, and it was kind of earlier than that in 2010. But uh, that one was really tough because Florida State had EJ Manuel, which was a huge leader on that team. Um, and they were having a, a great season, obviously, but and they had thoughts of going even farther to a national championship, but that loss really killed them in a lot of ways. Uh, Jameis Winston was the bat, or not the backup, but he was uh, redshirted then that season. Um, and there was a lot of talent on that team from 2012. Devontae Freeman was on there. A lot of the young guys in the secondary that ended up being – absolute studs in 2013 were on that team, but it just, that loss really click or, or stopped their momentum. So as a, as a younger person watching that, that was probably one of the toughest and excruciating losses for me. I'm, I'm trying to think of other ones. I would obviously, I remember watching the Oregon game. I was actually in New York city for watch the ball drop. So um, we watched that in the hotel room and Dalvin Cook fumbling, that was really, really rough as a true freshman. Um, just watching Florida State get dismantled because I think Florida State fans and Florida State's coaching staff were really happy to, to be seated with Oregon. They felt a lot more comfortable playing them. Florida State's a lot bigger. Um, you can do a little, can work a little bit slower against Oregon, but uh, it showed that speed and uh, Oregon was ready uh and, and the books and everything more than Jimbo was. So I'd, I'd go with 2012 NC State and 2014 Oregon and the Dalvin Cook uh, excruciating fumbles. Jason, we've magically given you a lobotomy. Uh, you are it's all coming back now. We, we, we need your we need your input. Well, we talked a little bit about that NC State game, about how uh, Seminoles coming into that game. That was a that was a heartbreaking one, because we talked about when you when you lose to a team that you have no business losing to. To me, it hurts more. You know, Oregon hurts because the way I mean, just just for me, because you're getting blown out. But also, that's a decent Oregon team. That NC State team, Florida State had no business losing to in the 2012 season. Just absolutely not. One that, that we didn't talk about last week that got me a little bit uh, when, when I thought more about it was the 1997 uh, Florida State game against Florida. That was Florida State came into that game, the number one team in the country. They were all set. At the time, there was, there was no ACC championship game, so they had already won the ACC. They were in line to play in the Orange Bowl for the national title. It was all set. It was all there. Florida had two losses, lost to LSU, got blown up by Georgia during the season. And 
Fred Taylor ran all over us. Mm. Just uh, we, we had a dominating lead early, and Florida just came back and upset us. You know, still went to the Sugar Bowl, still had a great season during that dynasty era, but that was one that that in hindsight hurts because that was a national title just waiting to happen right there. We would have blown out Nebraska or Tennessee. I'm sorry, Peyton Manning, decent, you know, decent quarterback. Florida State would have killed them. That defense would have killed Tennessee that year. I was born in 1997, so like you say, Jason, wow. I have an excuse for not being able to see it. Or like I was probably watching it with my dad, but I didn't understand what was going on. So that would be my excuse for not. That was a year after my bar mitzvah, so I'm a lot older than you. All right. This has been a great day so far here with the voice of college football, Mark Rogers. Jason, <laughs> I am much older than you, so don't make yourself feel bad. I should be the one feeling bad the pain in this conversation, but I have felt it before. So I just live with it. Uh, absolutely. So Jason, uh, who's your favorite player all time for Florida state? Oh, uh, personally, uh, that's tough. Personally, i have always will, will have a spot in my heart for work done. Work done will always be the guy who both as a Florida state football fan somebody who grew up, you know, my parents went to FSU. My dad was involved with the football team and he was in school there. It was, you know, he is what you want. He is the representative of what you want when you say, oh, Florida State football. You know, on the field, on a, arguably one of the greatest college football running backs. So I don't think it's enough credit for the work that he did at Florida State. He was, at, you know, at a time, you know, by the time his senior season rolled around, you had Troy Davis at Iowa State. You had Eddie George his junior year at Ohio State who won the Heisman. He was always – at any other time frame, he would have been the greatest running back in college football for the time he was there. But he just always – there was one other person who happened to be above him. And then what he's done afterwards, both in the NFL and since retiring, makes me proud to say he is an alumnus of the school like myself you know, like and like Logan will be. He he is everything that, that you want to say is a seminal. Work done the last three seasons at Florida State, 94, 95, 96, 1,000 yards rushing, 6.8 per carry, nine total touchdowns, 34 receptions, 1995, 1,200 yards, 7.5 yards per carry, 16 total touchdowns, 43 catches, and then his senior season in 1996, of course, that could have ended in a national championship, but a loss to the dreaded and hated Gators. He ran for just under 1,200 yards, 6.2 per carry, 14 TDs, 30 receptions, caught 132 passes, scored 49 touchdowns, averaged just under seven yards per attempt. Yeah, he was pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good work done. What do you say, Logan? I, Jason took mine. So I'm going to go before my born time in 1997. So like people, I mean, even um, some of these guys were there. Uh, still, but before I could really watch football and understand what's going on and what I listen to from my dad and what he tells me and my family, uh, work done is definitely up there. And from what I am to see now is him, what he's doing off the field. I think he's almost built close to 150 homes for families, which is absolutely incredible. It's actually closer to 250. He's oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know. I just read. I just looked it up, and it was 145 from uh, last year. So it's uh, moving quick. Yeah. So uh, it's insane. Uh, and obviously from what I've heard on the field, I would have loved to see him. I would love to see just how he was compared because all the comparisons are work done and Dalvin Cook. So I would like to see from my own eyes the two different kind of playing styles they have and see the sim similarities, the cutting that Dalvin Cook I know is uh, – beautiful in and I like to see work done play. I would just kill to go and doke and see it against uh, UF. And then uh, another guy before my time, kind of uh, P-Dub, um, Peter Wark. Uh, I, from what most college football fans, just diehard college football fans, doesn't matter if you're an FSU fan, said that he was one of the most electric and fun to watch players um, in the history, just as how talented he was. And I like his attitude and um, – Kind of got that Deion, Deion Sanders vibe with them. A little cocky in there, which I like. I mean, that's how Florida State um, was during the time blowing up, and they had the right to do that. They had the swag. So um, those two would be before my time kind of. Um, 
This one will be out of nowhere, kind of. Uh, it's a weird. Uh, I'm going with uh, Timmy Jernigan, uh, defensive Come tackle. Come yep. Yep. Came in five star, completed what he had to do, played in the national championship with pretty much a flu. Um, and you could tell he was because he had to take some time on the sideline and he was fighting for air. Um, and he's pulled the jersey up, even though he had a, had a big old belly. Uh, I like it. He had the swag. He was a big leader on the team. I remember him talking in the locker room in 2013 in Clemson with Jameis there. He's just got that, you know, that yeah. vibe that you would probably like to watch videos of him dancing and getting high before you go watch a four, uh, FSU game. You know, he just gives you that drive. Um, and he's and I actually have I wore number eight in high school because uh, because of him. And I, the Loco Ocho is something that I will never forget. Um, I actually have a picture of him. This is going to be weird. This is on live. YouTube, but I have a picture of him above my toilet. So um, every time I've got to pee, I, I see him and I got to think, all right, I got to bring my high. I know it's weird. It's weird. It's not uh, degrading to me journey. It's just that I see him there. You know, sometimes people put things there, um, but just, you know, I, I have a bit, I'm a big fan of him and he's, uh, I don't know. He's just got that swag type deal and he was a nasty player too. Very nasty. So Jason, depending on your reference there, just keep in mind that the bar has either been greatly heightened or lowered with that comment from Logan. So anything you, you want to share regarding your personal attachment to Florida State football, it is it is right out there in the open for us to share. I was raised as a Seminole fan. My parents both graduated from there. I am a proud graduate of the school. There will never be a picture of a player above my toilet. Uh, at all, but you know what, Logan? We don't judge. This is a judgment-free zone. We are, we are, we support you. I'm, I'm young. That'll be my excuse. That's it. Right, we're gonna go with that. You were born 1997. We got it. Good. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anything that you guys can say that will keep me on YouTube, but have us go viral at the same time, is fair game and uh, encouraged. I'm just trying to help you out, Mark. Even if you started this harsh with all these comments coming through and having to do with Miami fans and Florida fans at the same time, anything to help you out, I will do. And that's what I just had to do. I'm sorry. We are going to steer it back to some serious football discussion right here because oh I, I just had a topic. Yes, we are Jason. Thank you. God. You, you may want to check out for this one. Logan and I can have a, a one-on-one -on -one for this one. But this just popped into my head because I think it's intriguing and maybe we're just not uh, going to get enough time available to us uh, in the next 10 minutes to cover this because the pendulum swing in the ACC fascinates me. What happened? So if we go back seven, eight years, Clemson was on the rise uh, and Florida State, though, owned the ACC even before the national championship in 2013. As uh, Logan alluded to, the 2012 team that almost won a national championship, won the Orange Bowl, easily won the ACC. Uh, Florida State had ownership of the conference. Clemson was rising, but they kept hitting that ceiling, which was Florida State putting them in their place for a couple straight years when it appeared as though Clemson was ready to seriously challenge. Then came 2015 and 2016. Close games between the two, but Clemson broke through. The recruiting classes and the rankings of those classes would not give us any indication that suddenly Clemson took off as a top five recruiter and Florida State slumped. They both recruited basically at the same level. Florida State certainly did. Clemson, their, their stock rose. Their recruiting was upgraded during that time, but not at Ohio State, Alabama level of one, two, three in the country. Uh, but that, that 2014 to 16 time frame, the, the, the balance of power just swapped in the ACC, Jason. To me, Clemson finally started playing like a complete team. They, I mean, they were they were a competitive team. You go back to, to 2010, 2011 when they beat FSU, and then they won the ACC. Uh, 2012, well, you know, it was a close ball game. But it was always they had they had great players, great starters. But if a starter went down or somebody needed to come in, you know, sub on third down, they would struggle a little bit because there was definitely you know there was up here and then there was down here. They finally 
were able to have a complete team in time for 2015. Now, and I'm going to be the FSU homer here. You know, let's not forget in 2015, the game was tied in the fourth quarter. 2016, FSU had the lead, you know, late in the game. And I'm sorry, Florida State should have won that game. It was a horrible, horrible penalty against FSU. You know, I, I see Logan shaking his head. Hmm. And I think he doesn't want to remember that moment. But yeah. So Florida State should have won that game. And in 2017, Clemson only led by three with five minutes to go, and Florida State was driving in the fourth quarter. But nonetheless, a win is a win. Give Clemson credit for what they've done. And what they've done is finally played like a complete team. They are playing a lot in the same ways that the FSU team played in the first part of this decade. You know, you, you look at it, at the running back situation, when you had Devontae Freeman, you had James Wilder, two of the better running backs in college football. And then what do they do during the national title season? You move Carlos Williams over and, and, and play him, and you have a triple threat at running back that, that n- nobody could stop during the course of that season. Clemson finally played like that, and that's what you need to be a complete team and ultimately go 15-0 and, and destroy everyone, including mm-hmm. Alabama team that some people are saying is among the best ever. I, th- I agree with a lot of Jason, what Jason is saying, and I also want to point out, too, Clemson's finally got a QB system going on there. Um, uh, the, the deal is Todd Boyd was almost there. Um, he, was, he was a pretty solid college quarterback, but then you go through a wave with Deshaun Watson, who was a great college quarterback, and then you go to even Kelly Bryant, but then of course now uh, you head over to Trevor Lawrence, who's going to be a problem uh, for a while at Clemson. So they've always had the wide receiver talent. Just look at the NFL studs everywhere you look, and they still got some future NFL talent right now at Clemson. They always recruit well on that side. So having these quarterbacks being able to throw these guys and having some pretty decent running backs with it just powered that offense. They've always had a pretty decent defensive line all around. Um, Secondary has kind of been shaky a little bit, but given that uh, system, uh, given that system with a really nice quarterback, I think has helped them um, blow up on offense and score a lot of points with they, which they've been doing the last couple of years. Um, so I, and I think quarterback wise and being able to feed these extremely talented wide receivers uh, plays a big toll against uh, other ACC teams and how they've taken uh, over the conference. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, bringing you Florida State at talk, courtesy of these two gentlemen right here. We got uh, Jason Parker on the line from uh, Chop Chat and also Noel Game Days, Logan Robinson. So we're here every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time talking uh, Florida State football. Yeah, the other thing that happened during that sequence of uh, transition of power was early in that run for Clemson, not when they caught Florida State, but when they got um, to be a top 10 to 15 program there in 2011, 2012, the last game that they played without Brent Venables as defensive coordinator was that monumental, uh, monumental shellacking, I should say, uh, at the hands of Geno Smith in the Orange Bowl when they gave up 70 points. So they basically recruited pretty good on defense, but not like they weren't locked in, focused, didn't have a whole lot of interest in tackling kind of defenses. Guys that were fast, but not real physical, not focused, not tough, determined. They bring in Brent Venables, and they finally match the defense with the offense. And uh, that certainly... Uh, has had a big hand in in the transition of power between uh, Clemson and Florida State and what we've seen transpire in the last five years. Mm-hmm. When is it going to end? This this can't continue like this. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, uh, once uh, long-haired um, Lawrence leaves, I think that will probably give Florida State a, a good chance. So two more years of this? It's going to be tough. I mean, I, I I don't know. Dabo, I think, is unless something, unless all these little baby little rumors are coming out of Clemson and someone gets in trouble, but I, I think Dabo's smart enough for that not to happen. But um, I, I think Trevor Lawrence is a, is a very solid quarterback, and as we know, Clemson's recruiting very well. Um, and it's going to take some really good coaching 
on FSU's side to be able to compete because I think Florida State is going to be able to recruit if they have a pretty solid season this year. They be, they're able to bring in offensive guy, uh, offensive line guys, um, and that once you get your offensive line guys, that usually lays out the plan to get your quarterback, which you already have with Jeff Sims, but even other guys, and also that starts feeding your talent around it, and then defensive guys will go once they see um, the rest of that. So. But Florida State has always been well with secondary guys, and it seems like they're on a good trend with linebackers at the moment, which is nice to see. But um, for for FSU to be able to compete with Clemson, it's going to have to be with uh, coaching from here on out because I think Florida State has – it's not going to be that top of town. just depends on what kind of rankings you want to look at and all that crap, but it's going to have to come to coaching. And also, do you really want to be here and do you want to you know get your name out there? Do you want to have – be focused on the NFL, which is was a big problem in 2014. A lot of guys were already looking ahead at the NFL. Um, and there were some pro- problems there. But uh, do you want to stay here and fight for Willie Taggart and believe in his coaching? Like these guys have got to settle in with their mindset, knowing that this is let's focus on bringing wins in a Tallahassee because that's what that 2013 team did. They didn't give a damn about going to the NFL. They cared about winning there and going uh, to complete an insane run. And you could tell that, and they were having fun. You know, usually when you have that mindset, you're having a really good time. And you saw that all in 2013, smiling and laughing before a, a game on primetime against in Death Valley against, what, number three mm-hmm. at the time, Clemson. It's, it's all about the mindset and how these guys are going to be playing um, and also coaching with Willie Taggart and how he brings his coaching staff around him. And you touched on it earlier when you talked about Timmy Jernigan, how he was your favorite player. It, it To me, I'll, I'll say it like this. He was one of those players, you talk about, you look at the early 2000s, this decade. He was one of those players that got recruited by these assistants who came in and, and like you said, sold the product. And you mentioned Dante Lucas, kid from IMG and from Miami Booker T. Uh, how these guys, if they, if they are buying into the, to, to Florida State football, I think there will be success. Do I think Clemson wins this year? Yes. Is it going to be a 49-point win like last year? No, not at all. Do I think that the 2020 game in Tallahassee, I think that could be interesting. I could easily – I'm not calling it right now, but I can easily see Florida State, if things go together this year, an 8-4, 9-3 regular season this year, I can easily see FSU knocking off Clemson come 2020 in Tallahassee. There's your title. There's your title for the YouTube video, Mark, right there. Hot take, hot take. 2020 title. That that gets us a viral status right there. Florida State wins national championship in 2020. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Just against Clemson. Well, if you're going to be Clemson, you might as well win the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I guess you might as well win it, though. All right, fine. Go for it. Just take okay. it. <laughs> you, yeah. You'll probably get to the college football playoff. If you're yeah. being Clemson in your conference, you'll probably make it at least to the playoffs. National title games down here in South Florida. Let's do it. Go for it. Sure, All right. Let's mark it down. And mark this down, everyone out there. Here's the deal. 7 o'clock Eastern time every Wednesday night. We bring on the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the industry every day. But we lock it in with Florida State football talk with Logan Robinson and Jason Parker and a cast of thousands that could be um, – implemented at some point but certainly we got logan and jason on the line uh each and every week to bring you florida state football talk so we are going to deliver over the next few weeks we're going to talk position previews going across the board offense and defense we're going to talk recruiting if uh, there's recruiting news to talk about acc coaches rankings are coming your way in the acc one through 14 and also if you would like to have your questions answered by these two gentlemen and myself then uh, certainly leave your uh, questions, your comments uh, in any of the comment sections of any of the videos. I scan everything, so I'll catch it. Don't leave it in the live chat. It's gone. It's scrolling by. Uh, Leave it in the comment section of any of the videos. And of of course, you can help us build the channel by uh, grabbing the Amazon link, doing your Amazon shopping right there. But please join us for more Florida State Football Talk starting next week as we get you set for 2019, not 2020 quite yet, the national championship season, but 2019, the stepping stone to the national championship run of 2020. (laughs) Gentlemen, thanks for jumping on here. It's always a fun time. And um, absolutely, you guys are the best. Thank you for having us. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you for put, putting us through <laughs> crap earlier, but we forgive you, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Shout out Omaha. Omaha. Yeah, buddy. That's right. Everybody go watch some Florida State baseball this week. And uh, for everybody else, we've got Miami. Yes, that's a bad word, I know, for, for many of you on the, the live chat right now. But within a few minutes, new link. Keep it right here, front page of my YouTube channel. And you will find the Miami live stream coming up in just a couple of minutes. See you then.